and you have a populist mm -hmm. president. Where are they going to tighten to? They're not going to hurt anybody but they're people that don't have to do. They're going to have to do something either about the quantitative easing or slowing the pedal right now because they're going to be in danger. Mark yep. and Stephen, gentlemen, thank you very much. Okay. Let's get the members of the D.C. community, get their reaction. I'm joined by Democratic Representative Joe Sestak of Pennsylvania and Republican Representative Charles Bustani, sorry, Charles Bustani Jr. of Louisiana. Good morning, gentlemen. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Uh, all right, so, Good morning. So, um, Congressman Sestak, first of all, your immediate reaction. What do you think of the numbers? This is good news in the sense that while the economy still is intense, it is not intensifying. This is one of three factors you need to look at in order to see if the bottom is about to be reached. We had hoped, when you run the models like Moody's.com, that we would hit 500,000 initial new unemployment claims by July. We're still going to go to 10% unemployment. But this shows, in particular when you compare it to the 1982 recession, where in the first 15 months you had only 2.9% new job losses. We've had in the last 15 months 3.7% job losses. This shows that businesses shed, have shed jobs more quickly, therefore there's less slack now, and so therefore they're slowing down of laying off workers. This is good news. Interesting point there. Congressman Bastani, do you, do you agree? I mean, when you look at 600,000 jobs lost in the private sector, that's going to rattle some cages today. Well, these, these numbers are unacceptably high. Clearly, uh, we need to get a more certain climate in place for businesses. Uh, small businesses and large businesses alike are having a hard time making decisions about hiring and everything else given the uncertainty. And when I talk about uncertainty, I'm talking about a lack of an energy policy for this country, a, a lack of certainty with regard to tax policy, and also unacceptably high health care costs. Congressman Sestak, here's my concern. I, I, I am one of those, I, I hate to say it, but I am most concerned about a double dip in this recession. I, I feel like there's all these markers out there that we're going to get fooled by. And one of the things that Stephen Lieb mentioned is if you look at oil prices, you look at what's happening to energy, to gasoline prices, all those inflation fears are percolating while unemployment and things of that nature are only going to get worse. What do we do if we have used all of our bullets so early in the process? It's interesting. If your concern is about inflation, and we should have that concern, the one tool that we always used is still there in the closet ready to come out. Raise interest rates by the Fed because the Fed has actually used the federal overnight lending rate to zero percent. We have kept the interest rates low. What it's done is used its quantitative easing program that it put money out there for capital so we can get the mother milk of our economy credit flowing again. Look, here's the issue. We still have that wonderful tool of raising up the rates if inflation begins. Second, and this is, I think, important, the other two ingredients to look at to see if the economy is beginning to start bottoming them out. I don't love these numbers, but it's a good indicator, is LIBOR, the overnight bank lending rate. Mm -hmm. It shot up to 6.7% last September for a few days. Well, you know, it's normally at 50 basis points. It's about 86 basis points now. Again, credit's beginning to give us a little bit of traction. And finally, public confidence. You saw the reports last week in the New York Times. Public confidence is starting to rebound. I'm not saying this is tremendous. I'm saying it's coming to say that we're no longer in free fall, and we've got to keep that tool of raising interest rates by the Fed available for inflation, but our economy is beginning to get traction, and this is good signs. Uh, you know, it's interesting, Congressman Bustani. I received a report of some comments coming out of the Obama administration, some, some steps that they're going to use this morning to address those who are out of work, suggesting staying on unemployment rolls, uh, not necessarily the best thing. We want to give people the proper education, the things to move forward. What is going to be the message today out of the administration? How do they address this after what at least was perceived in the marketplace as though a fairly well done? stress test? Well, I think it's important uh, to have an unemployment insurance program as a safety net, but I heard some earlier comments on your program that it also needs to be a springboard back to employment. And so I think clearly the president needs to send that message. And on the House Ways and Means Committee, which has jurisdiction over this program, we need to look at this and look at it closely. Uh, I would also say that the, the uh, Treasury auction this week has some worrisome signs. I mean, the, the uh, yield has gone up, and 
as the Fed is using quantitative easing uh, measures, we also have a real problem with the risk of inflation coming on down the line. The energy prices are of concern. They haven't fallen as far as we thought they would with this uh, recession. But I'll tell you, without a good energy policy in place, energy prices are going to come right back up, and we could be in a real hot box very quickly. Yeah, I mean, Congressman Sestak, you know, it's, it's interesting. I've been having this argument with people over the past couple of days where I've been saying, look, I believe there was a thought process behind the Fed deciding it was going to be six months that they wanted these uh, financial institutions fully funded. I mean, the fact of the matter is about a third of the money might be raised by Monday morning alone. To me, it signals <laughs> that the Fed wants to get a her ahead of the inflation curve. They will know that they're fully funded and therefore they can start raising rates or easing some of this quantitative easing faster than everybody predicts. The problem is everybody says, well, if unemployment is so high, how can they do that? On the other hand, aren't the consequences of the rising inflation so dangerous for this economy? You know, it's interesting. I think the real challenge, inflation is absolutely, I think we're beginning to move away from a deflation uh, crisis and towards our concern into an inflation one. I think what you're going to begin seeing, and this stress test was good news for two reasons. One, for the first time in quite some period, we actually had the government, instead of reacting to something, being proactive and looking ahead to say, what if we have a worse economy? Now it said, let's get some more capital there, and the private markets look like they're going to work without more government infusion. So now the second point is, can the Fed begin to untwine itself from the economy in a very deliberate way without causing chaos and more concern by keeping the money out there from the government of inflation? For example, we have already seen that in uh, the reg regular notes that are just put out there that you pay day by day, that no longer does the Fed have to give money out there for, for banks or companies to borrow money mm -hmm. uh, in order to do their payrolls. Now the Fed, the private bank uh, are taking that over. Second, we have very many things out there that are automatic. For example, about $1 trillion of the money that the Fed has loaned out there is only on three months loan, like credit defaults uh, loans and all. So you're going to see the Fed begin to untwine here slowly but surely so the inflation concerns from the federal government money being out there is removed. You've got to do it carefully and it's going to be challenging, but at least we still have that tool of ha raising interest rates if we need to by the Fed to help control it. All right. Uh, I think this is a deliberate nice path. Okay, uh, Congressman Bastani, I can't let you go without asking you, are you going to run against Senator Arlen Specter? Uh, well, I'm from Louisiana, so I'm not going to be <laughs> oh, running oh, against Arlen Specter. Oh, Congressman Sestak, did I say Bastani? My, <laughs> my apologies, <laughs> Congressman Sestak. I'm sorry. I are you, Are going you telling to? me I have a name recognition problem? <laughs> no, you, you don't have a name recognition problem, and you certainly know a lot about this economy. Would you do it? Oh, let, let me say that I would not hesitate to get in this race. I was disappointed in the political democratic establishment of Washington, D.C., stating that they knew who our candidate, we, independent Pennsylvanians, candidate should be. That's why I stood up for my district in Pennsylvania and said, wait a moment. This is a country with no kings and no king makers. We will decide that. Now what I believe is this, and you said it, this economy is our number one issue. What is Arlen running for? Can he articulate how he, in the past, would have helped us do better and in the future? What's his proposals having voted against President Obama's budget to reform our health security where we lose $100 billion a year in economic productivity because of the 46 million uninsured Americans? If I don't hear the right answers, I believe that the mantle of leadership that we want to carry the right ideas forward for policy should be one of an individual who supports where we're going. And I wouldn't hesitate to get in at all. I haven't decided yet. But I'm not going to hesitate if I need I, to. I am laughing. You always join me for these job Fridays, and you're always terrific. I'm laughing because I, the answer was yes at the start, I believe. <laughs> but um, I, <laughs> I think I you gave a yes, Alexis. I, yeah, yeah, right, Congressman Bastani. That sounded like the biggest yes to me. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much. It was great having you both with us, and I hope you'll join us again on the uh, on the next Jobs Friday. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And for All the time. right. Well, we just heard the April jobs number: five hundred thirty-nine thousand jobs. Lost unemployment at 8.9%, not good.